Welcome to the Five Week Linguist Show. If you want to learn a language or you teach a language, you've come to the right place. Join Janina each week for tips, resources, and advice for making engaging language learning happen anytime, anywhere. A fun activity to correct errors. I feel really strongly about errors as a language teacher. It's so interesting because I think in this profession, if you're a language learner or a language teacher, we so want to be accurate and we want to be effective and we want to be correct in our communication. And of course, we want to want that for our students. So the instinct sometimes can be to correct everything that's wrong, right? We think, oh, if we correct it, then they know it's wrong. And that's true, right? That said, it's not particularly helpful. If you think about it, we communicate more with fluency and more effectively with fluency with being able to say more things than we do with necessarily being able to say things really accurately. So we're dealing with two things here. So we want to teach students what's right and we want for ourselves to know what's right, what's correct, and what isn't correct. That's important. But we also very importantly, want to be able to help students keep working on fluency so they can communicate more effectively. And they're not going to do that without errors. That's not realistic. I mean, if you tell someone you're not going to speak this new language until you don't make any errors, it's probably never going to happen. So you're just going to have to accept errors as part of the deal. Errors are okay. okay? We have to teach students how to take risks and allow them to take risks and allow them to make mistakes because they, they're going to need that during all their practice. And as we know, practice makes perfect. So there's all different sorts of theories on what we should do to correct errors. I think a lot of us repeat back and forth, you know, back to students what, they, what they've said without explicit Correction. Some people correct absolutely everything, stop the mid sentence. There's so many different ways that people do this. But I'm a huge proficiency oriented teacher and I love to teach my students fluency. I love, and again, I have to accept some of these errors, but I can't accept all of them. I can't let all of them go. So, one activity I really like to do, and there's many, but I'm just going to share this one here today, is I take an assignment, it could be a journal entry, it could be an essay, it could be a letter, it could be any type of writing or speaking that the students do. And I take all of their errors, I take, not all of them, I take a whole bunch of their errors out and I write them out in some kind of format that they're not gonna recognize the, the handwriting, that's really important. Or if it's speaking, you wanna go ahead and write them down or say them yourself and record them so that they can correct them. So it's really important that they have no idea who it came from. You know, there's no giveaways like pen color or anything like that. So I like to type them out or handwrite them and give them back to the students. So you might wanna put this down in the form of a worksheet, you can do that. But one way I really prefer to do it is to display them somehow on the board and only let them see one at a time. So what the students do is I show them the sentence in some, some way. They go ahead and they try to make it correct. A lot of times students will recognize that it's theirs, but if you have a, a, an atmosphere of risk taking in your classroom, they won't mind. And, and it might bother them the first time they see it, but they, it won't in the future because you'll have fun doing this. So I usually, let the students, you know, there's usually something at stake there, maybe some points, some something. So on the, so after the error, they're going to write down what they think is the correct sentence. So of course, you know, you give them however much time you think they need. The beginners, these sentences are going to be shorter than for the more advanced ones. And so, you know, you know your students, so you, you know how this needs to go. You're going to then make the correction for them. And they either get, you know, their point, their check, their, their euros, whatever it is that you're doing, or they don't. 
right? You might want to start them off with like a little, you know, quantity of points or numbers or, you know, play euros or something fun that you get to incorporate um, and recycle some numbers in, in there. Or you might want to do, I, I, I give you a few examples here. So you have like, um, you know, the incorrect sentences and then you kind of reveal the correct sentences or you can correct the sentences in front of them. But I think you get the point. This is a really powerful way to, you know, you're not necessarily getting into grammar and structures. You know, you're not beating grammar to death, but you're definitely correcting their grammar and they're all talking about it. They'll say, ooh, I knew that. I couldn't remember. You're going to hear them really go back to their thought processes and they're going to share with each other. You know, they're all, there's patterns of mistakes, of course. And, and if you've got one level of, of a class, you're probably going to see the same types of mistakes, um, same patterns of mistakes. because We all pass through those same levels. But what's really interesting is, you know, you're going to see, you're going to have some really powerful in-context grammar lessons here with you and the students and their own errors. So how do you correct errors? How do you deal with them? Thank you for listening to the Five Week Linguist Show with Janina Klimas. Join us each week here and visit us at reallifelanguage.com slash blog for more resources for learning and teaching languages. 